Watch now as I take you down a road that is less traveled in the field of medicine. You've seen all the doctors taking many tests and pills, but you keep getting worse. Do you know why? Welcome to Know the Cause. I'm Dawn Strom, and about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with numerous autoimmune diseases that the doctors really gave me no hope or gave me no answers for. And one day, I turned on the television and watched Know the Cause, and I decided to do the phase one diet and do the antifungal herbals and uh, medications, and within nine months, I was well. Welcome to Know the Cause. Dawn has an amazing story, and that is when you remove toxins from your body, you just keep getting better and better and better. I'm living proof of that. I feel great for an old man. A couple of doctors joining us today. You all know and love Dr. Lynn Jennings. She's talking about something called onychomycosis. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. And then Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, a good buddy of mine from California, talking about an acidic environment that you have inside your body. What happens when the body turns acid, the pH drops down? And then brand new sponsors, Bert Golding and his wonderful wife, Karen, are here from Positive Power Nutrition to expound on what Dr. Keneally's talking about. What happens when you become very acid? A couple of brand new products, Super Silica and Cell Power, and a book all about that we'll teach you about today. And then finally, my good friend, Penny Mullins. What happens when cancer isn't really cancer? All that and more on today's Know the Car. Well, we've talked about this 290 times on Know the Cause. Fungus can affect every tissue in your body. Seborrheic dermatitis, many doctors feel dandruff is caused by a fungus in the scalp. And then there's onychomycosis, or toenail fungus. Look at what happens when it gets to the toenail in just a second. Look at what happens to this poor man, this was 50, 60 years ago, when a fungus called histoplasma encapsulata began eating away at his face. Proof, folks, that once fungus gains a stronghold on or in your body, you're in trouble. Watch this on toenail fungus. Okay, so these two pictures are examples of toenail fungus. And the thing that you can get from this is that this has been going on for a really long time. Toenails don't get like this overnight. These are also outward manifestations of chronic fungal overgrowth. I tell patients if I see that they have fungus, I tell them if you have it on your toes, you've got it in your gastrointestinal tract. There's no two ways about it. And so this also, uh, if you look and you talk to these people, they've got other health problems. If this doesn't come along, not like this, certainly. The skin is so very, very dry. The toenails are thickened. They need to be treated. They need to be on an antifungal diet, like the phase one diet, oral antifungals if needed. If their system can tolerate uh, prescription antifungals, based on looking at these toenails, he looks like he's probably a pretty sick person, um, this gentleman here. Um, so I would go with natural antifungals. Those are simple enough. You can buy them over the counter and they're relatively non-toxic. The good news and the bad news is if you treat your fungus or you treat your psoriasis or you treat your eczema or whatever skin issues you have, that doesn't necessarily mean that you've gotten rid of all of the fungus in your gastrointestinal tract. Treating fungus is a lifestyle change. I can make it look better, but if you continue to do things that would be, that would be uh, risky for the development of more fungal disease, like, like eating a lot of grains and corn and peanuts, which we know are associated with fungus, or you have to uh, continually take antibiotics for another medical problem, you have to be vigilant. You have to kind of stay on it. Taking natural antifungals and following the phase one diet. But the good news is that if you treat this with the diet and with antifungals, a lot of the other problems that you have are gonna go away. That's been my experience. The arthritis usually gets better. The cholesterol will usually get better. 
most of the medical problems, headaches, migraines, pretty much seen it all. And it gets better. Thank you, Dr. Jennings. We've talked about this causing dandruff. We've seen a slide, an old slide of a man with histoplasma, another type of fungus, eating away at a man's face, and now that toenail fungus. One of my favorite books, 1996, is Clinical Mycology, Principles and Practice of. And in this book, it'll give you a pretty good idea of where this fungus uh, grows in your body. And Duke and Stanford and the cancer societies, everybody has published this information. This is not controversial. Uh, chapter uh, 17, for example, fungal infections of the respiratory tract. 16, those in the eye. This is a liquid, vitreous humor in the eye, and it can attract fungus. Fungal infections of the kidney and those associated with kidney failure. Chapter 14, fungal diseases in the genital urinary system, including fungal prostatitis. Think about that one. Uh, fungus infecting the GI tract. Fungemia, fungus in the bloodstream, it really does happen, and I think it's quite common. Uh, fungal infections of the ear, nose, and throat. Fungal diseases on the skin, you saw one of those. Fungus causing mass lesions in your central nervous system. Fungus causing sores, we're going to talk about that later on. Fungal meningitis, the covering uh, of the uh, brain and spinal column. Uh, fungus diseases in cardiovascular systems. Fungus in the bones and joint. It becomes really apparent that this fungus can grow anywhere in your body. It also might have become apparent to you that when I don't eat grain, like Doug talks about, grains are commonly contaminated with fungal poisons. When I don't eat grain, I don't eat rice and sugar and corn and so forth, I feel really, really good. Why is that? Because we're not prompting our immune system to have to begin fighting even trace amounts of these poisons. Now, we're going to go to a break right now. When we get back from the break, we're going to talk about the pH. What is right? 7.2, 7.1, 5.0, 8.0. What's a good pH? Dr. Lear and Keneally will talk about that. And then brand new clients from Positive Power Nutrition. Don't go away. A whole lot more to come. Here to help you with your health issues today is Frank Jordan, bringing you the NSC Minute. When you were born, do you remember the doctor who delivered you saying, I have bad news, newborn. You've only got 28,470 days to live. Why, when we have a health challenge that in their opinion will be terminal, do physicians insist on telling us that we have only 30 or 90 days to live? Aren't we all terminal when we're born? Did you know if you live to the average lifespan of 78 years, you'll in fact have only 28,470 days to live. While we all have a terminal condition called age, the key is to have a quality life, not just a quantity of life. Knowledge and lifestyle wrapped in hope and faith are the keys. And personally, I'm not dead until I die. God determines our time and place, no one else. You must be dying to live, not living to die. Now smile, be thankful, and have a great day. Today's That's My Take comes to you from Cattle Producers' website. I mean, this is so amazing, folks, and let me just jump off with this point. Cattle producers and farmers know infinitely more about health than most of our doctors today. I'm sorry, if you don't know mycotoxins, cattle farmers, cattle producers and farmers do. If you don't know mycotoxins, you don't know the cause of the arrhythmias of the patient. You don't know why diabetes exists or why that lump grew in a breast. And yet these guys are really on top of it. Thanks to companies like Alltech, a, a global animal health and nutrition company. Listen to this. Headline. All of the corn and corn silage samples submitted during the 2013 harvest tested positive for multiple mycotoxins. Amen. That's all you have to say. And then it goes on to say, despite more rainfall across the Corn Belt and yields pushing record production, farmers must consider quality rather than quantity when it comes to their corn. Doctors must consider the cause instead of shoving another pill at a person. I mean, this is so amazing, folks. This is good science. This is great science. I've told you now for 15 years that corn is a food I don't eat. 
You might, and you might feel fine, that's great. The body has a built-in immune system that sometimes overcomes all of these mycotoxins we're being exposed to. But if you're a corn eater, popcorn, corn on the cob, etc., and you have health problems, please think of what cattle producers know. And that's eating these mycotoxins get into your bloodstream and that can wreak havoc on good health. The cattle don't thrive, they spontaneously abort, they get very, very sick when they get these corn mycotoxins. But remember, mycotoxins are also found commonly in peanuts and wheat and other grains. So it's not just a corn problem, it's an intelligence problem. We need to be intelligent when we make food choices. That's just my take. That's My Take is brought to you by NSC Immunition Products. Let your better tomorrow begin today with Immunition Products. Thanks in part to Know the Cause, doctors are finally understanding that there is a food disease link. Cooking the right food makes all the difference in the world. Now the right diet is memorialized in a book called Cooking Your Way to Good Health. Fungi are parasites they need to eat. Starve them and they'll begin dying. Along with antifungals, eating right is very important. Now you can eat right by reading Cooking Your Way to Good Health. It's a recipe book. Many years ago, while growing up in the nutrient-rich green countryside of Japan, Dr. Ohira had the genesis for the idea that would become the fermentation process for one of Japan's best probiotics when traveling in Malaysia. Dr. O'Hira concluded it must be the fermented foods they ate that contained these beneficial probiotic bacteria that contributed to their good digestion and enhanced immune health. Dr. O'Hira's probiotics are the ultimate in probiotic supplementation. Feel the Dr. O'Hira difference. Nine word question I hear all the time. What in the world is this phase one diet? Fungi are pathogenic to man. They can cause disease and they're also parasites in man. They must eat your food. Don't let them do that. We know what they like to eat. Eating Your Way to Good Health is a recipe book that teaches you how to eat foods that fungus don't like. You can thrive, the fungus can't. It makes sense. Eating Your Way to Good Health. Pick it up today. Are you too acid or are you too alkaline or are you just right smack in the middle? My good friend, Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally talks about pH. Are you feeling tired? Are you dragging? Is your stomach kind of bloated? Do you have sugar cravings? Do you just feel blah? Well, do you know what makes your body really work? Remember in chemistry class you took a topic about acidity and being alkaline? Well, your body is naturally alkaline. And when you feel sick, your body's acidic. And so we really have to aim to be alkaline every day and not acidic. Because once you're acidic, the cells are paralyzed and don't work. So what makes you alkaline? Lots of wonderful veggies. Hmm, vegetables. That's a very good way to make your body more alkaline. They say sugar makes it acid and veggies make you more alkaline. What is kind of the midline? They say seven to seven and a half, somewhere in there is where our pH should be. I talked to a guy named Bert Golding, Bert and Karen Golding. Karen is his wife of many years. As a matter of fact, we sat down a short time ago and had a whole conversation on this pH. Without a lot of veggies, maybe you don't like veggies. Without a lot of veggies, how do you stabilize that pH? And more importantly, what happens if it isn't stabilized? What happens if you're one of these people who live down in the 6.2 or 5.0 area where it's more acidic, like Dr. Keneally was talking? What happens down there? Conversely, what happens if it's way too high, 9.0, you're way too alkaline, because illness can thrive in both of those environments. How do we stabilize it? I happen to love this brand new sponsor's product called Cell Power. I want to quickly talk with you folks about brand new sponsors to know the cause. This is Bert and Karen Golding. They have a company called Positive Power nutrition. A couple of products I want to talk about today, although there's a bunch of them. Cell Power and Super Silica. Uh, just call them. They'll send you the brochures free and information on what they do. 
Bert, thank you for coming in. Karen, thank you for being thank here you. also. That's really great. good of you to be here with us. I didn't know much about this until my dear friend, you folks may know, a man named Kyle Drew, uh, taught me a little bit about these. And I'm telling you, the benefits he's seeing with these products are amazing. So thank you for joining us in our sponsorship. Bert, uh, let's start with super silica. Silica is a mineral. Um, why do we never hear of it? It really is an overlooked trace mineral, but it's an essential trace mineral. A lot of scientists call it the key to life because there is no such thing as biological living cells, plants, animals, or human cells that can survive without silica. Wow, it's that essential. You've played with it a little bit, right? You two don't work together necessarily, but you've got a lot of friends and family and so forth. As a matter of fact, 10 children. Congratulations on that. Uh, that you probably always tell, look, honey, I want you to take this in the morning and the, the cell power in the evening and drink them Definitely. down. And you're finding a whole lot of results with these products. Yes. What kinds of things do you see? Oh, just people being able to walk up and down the stairs, their joints work better. And they're more winded, right? They exactly. Have, yeah. And not the aching in the joints that's So in women, away. hair, nails, I yes. would think silica would yes. be tremendous for that. Wow, and you put a drop of silica in the glass of water you're already drinking, Let's say you have eight ounces left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom, drink it down a couple times a day. I mean, that's the silica end of it. Super, or cell power. Um, this is the one Kyle's really excited about too because Kyle says, look, fungus alters the pH of mediums they grow in. So a lot of us have acidic problems, but a lot of us have alkaline. We're way too alkaline because we're sucking down sodium bicarb or something 10 times a day. So somewhere in there you have to reestablish equilibrium. Is that what cell power does? Yes, yeah, cell power again is a liquid concentrate. You put the drops right in the water you're already drinking and what it does is it will help normalize your pH. So you're not, it's not pushing you into the alkaline range. Um, it will help you uh, come down into the healing range pH wise if you're too alkaline or like 95% of the population that's too acidic, it will help you come up into that range. Just a few weeks to do that. And that's what we need, a change of diet, the cell power and so forth. Let's go backwards here. Uh, well, we don't need to. Deficiency level, system affected deficiency symptoms. This is regarding which of your products? Super silica. So super silica, which we talked about first, when we have a very slight deficiency, as I was saying, Karen, we see nails, hair affected. But folks, look at when you get down here. It affects veins, causing spider veins, arteries. It can affect the brain, nervousness. How about this one, irregular heartbeats? Anybody have arrhythmias or tachycardia? And then down into the actual mechanism of the cell itself, all the way down into causing fibroid tumors, autoimmune diseases, when you're deficient in this mineral. That, to me, is unbelievable. That Do you think our cardiologists understand this or our cancer specialists know this? No, but uh, scientists that do research on nutrients do. It turns out that silica, even though it's just a trace mineral, is the most researched of any nutrient. The most university studies, the most double-blind studies over the past 50 years. So there's a lot of evidence of what silica will do, but not many people are, are talking about it. And it was Louis Pasteur 150 years ago that said, keep an eye on this silica because they're gonna talk a lot about zinc and calcium and so forth, but when there's a, a deficiency in this, you've got a real deficiency. Really appreciate you being with us today, thank you. Grapeseed extract contains one of nature's strongest natural antioxidants. Your heart and veins are under constant attack from oxidative damage from chemicals and even from compounds from your digestive system. Oxidative stress causes your skin to wrinkle, blood vessels to clog or form varicose veins. Order Seagate's grape seed extract today by calling direct at 1-888-505-4283 or check out our internet specials at seagateproducts.com. You know, many years ago, a friend of mine up north in the U.S. asked me if I would begin writing a column in her newspaper. I did so, and we've memorialized five years of that in a book called The Fungus Link to Health Problems. Not only do we have the phase one, phase two diets, but also a fungal quotient. How do I know if my symptoms are linked to fungus? This book will probably help you. Get the diet, get the fungal quotient, get five years of information in the book, The Fungus Link to Health Problems. 
Fungus Head to Toe, a 1957 book called Clinical and Immunologic Aspects of Fungal Diseases, Johns Hopkins Medical School, said four times that four different fungi mimic cancer. What happens if you're exposed to mold and an antifungal program not only takes care of the mold, but takes care of tumor growth in your body? Watch my friend Penny. I wish we had 20 hours to do this, but we only have about five minutes. Penny Mullins is a breast cancer survivor. Uh, Penny Mullins has now survived it twice. Not only survived it, she is thriving. She's been a dear friend of mine since I first met you at the TV studio in Fort Worth. Uh, your niece worked there also and introduced us. I had just written a book called The Fungus Link. You probably got copy number one and you studied it and you had been told by doctors, if I can just paraphrase all this, there's really nothing, stage three breast cancer, not much we can do. So you were flying off to Nevada to be hooked up to IVs, an alternative doctor. When you called your insurance company after landing, they said, nope, we're not gonna pay for any of this. Go back and get chemo and radiation, which the doctor recommended. So you went back and took a chemo. Now, take it from there. How was that chemo? Uh, um, rates up there with the worst experience of my life. One. One. one, one. Yeah. Um, and it's, people don't tell you this, but you have to sign a lot of papers before they ever do this to you. And so you, they show you these videos about all that can go wrong, and then you have to sign off on that, including death, other cancers, permanent heart, liver, lung, eye, and kidney damage. You sign off on all that. And so I had no idea. Pretty much everything that could go wrong did, did. go wrong. Did you lose all your hair yes. on the free? Is this your hair? Yes. Yeah, boy, is that beautiful now. <laughs> Thank you. But the hair went away, and mm -hmm. I think I met you shortly thereafter. Yes. Dr. Dave Holland was mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. and we sat down with you. I'll never forget that on the set, you yes. know, like this. And mm -hmm. we said, Penny, let's try this. What do we got to lose, right? So we tried some antifungals. Mm -hmm. We tried the phase one diet. Mm -hmm. And then I heard back from you that things, and from your niece, that things were going pretty well. Right. And then through the years, folks, when I saw people uh, with advanced stages of cancer who came to us and said, look, I don't, uh, the doctor is giving me one option right, chemo and radiation. Uh, I want to try something different. I had them call Penny. First of all, it's usually breast cancer. I don't own those, or I, I don't own female <laughs> breast cancer with, with hormone receptor sites and so forth, estrogen receptor sites. Penny does. And you always took their calls. Thank you. Even men who called mm -hmm. with cancers, you always took their calls. So she's been a guardian angel to me through the years. Then we had a scare one year ago now. Tell us about that. Um, a series of broken bones and fatigue and uh, just general malaise issues uh, put me back into the doctor and um, bottom line, uh, metastasis all throughout my bones. So now stage four. Stage four. Okay, you've gone 10 years. I know. And done well. Was this prefaced by a change in diet? Did you find yourself at holiday time enjoying fudge and mm -hmm. look, I've gone 10 years, I can get away with this a little bit. Sweets weren't, or have never been my issue. Yeah. But carbs in the form of like Tex-Mex and Come potatoes. On. We live in Texas. I know, I love Corn that. Corn chips. Yeah. So that, that, but ice cream and candy weren't my <laughs> issues. But um, the, yes, di poor, poor dietary choices, poor response to stress. Precipitated all. Mold again, it, it, I, both times I had mold in my master bedroom suite. Wow. Um, so yes. So the second time stage four now, they've got to tell you, sorry, get your affairs in order. Yes. So you and I sat down and I remember telling you, uh, Larry, your husband, uh, you have eight children. One of your daughters was there who just got married. Congratulations right. by you. the way on that. And I remember telling you, I don't know much, but we did this once. Let's roll up our sleeves and do it again. And you went back on very much the same yes. program. And we were in the middle of a remodel in our home and my rear pocket, I carried my phone in my rear pocket and it buzzed. And I'll never forget that afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I hit it and it was from my friend Penny. And what did you say? At three and a half months after diagnosis, after they showed me the door, said there yeah. was nothing they could do, it was complete remission. They said there was no evidence of avid metastasis and near complete resolution. So all those tumors that were there, all except one small one, were gone. Okay, now here's what this means, folks. You saw on this show not long ago that a lot of times, or 
not a lot of times, a few times lung cancer is erroneously diagnosed. These are aspergilloma in the lungs, these balls that grow in the lungs and they look just like cancer with an x-ray. I happen to believe that many cancers are misdiagnosed. You can't say this was a cancer, stage three, then stage four, and then responded favorably twice to antifungals. Is that a misdiagnosis? Was this fungus? It responded favorably to antifungal programs. I don't think it's fair for Penny or I to say all cancers are misdiagnosed. Here's the important take home message. Some are. Mm. And those some are people that would thrive with an antifungal program. How do you know if yours is or isn't? You don't. But like Penny always told me, to change your diet is so easy and you start feeling better and better and better. This is a woman who's been allowed to live 11 years longer than the doctor told her she would. There is a reason for that. What we've done is we have an after the show show with Penny that tells the whole story right on our website right now or after today's show. Go to knowthecause.com and there sits Penny and Doug. Listen to the complete story. Penny, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, arthritis in my left hip. Had a lot of pain in my leg. Well, they put me on a real heavy medication at an arthritis doctor. There's a natural solution, Flexin. I would have tinges of pain in my hips and my knees. <laughs> Had a lot of pain in my leg. Gone, completely gone. I just love Flexin. Flexin has just made me feel super. Flexin will have you feeling better in no time. Call today. That's 1-800-END-PAIN. What do you think? Know This is now in magazine format. It turns pages just like that. It's that simple. Now, mom doesn't have a computer. She wanted to get Know This. Make her a copy and send it off to her. A new recipe every month, the same great articles you're always used to, and then sponsor and our own sales on Know This. Simply go to our website, knowthecause.com, click on sign up free. It's yours, we send it to you. Then you can disseminate it anywhere you want. It's that simple. Isn't it wonderful when the host actually enjoys watching the show as much as all of you do? Thank you for joining us today, folks. Take-home message is really fungus grows anywhere in the human body, and the sad thing, doctors know a lot about bacteria and viruses, but not a lot about fungus. I mean, case in point is Penny. Twice she's been told stage three, stage four cancer, but remember that ascomycetes, or sac fungi, mimic cancer tumors just perfectly. So keep in mind when you have a diagnosis uh, to really get a backup opinion or two backup opinions, hopefully go to somebody who understands fungus, like Dr. Lynn Jennings. Thank you, Dr. Jennings, for the intro to onychomycosis, toenail fungus, that might be a sign that it's growing throughout our body. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee Aaron Keneally, and the intro into acid alkaline environments and pH. How important is it? That's the whole basis of this company, Positive Power Nutrition. Thank you, Bert Golding and Karen Golding, for their introduction and their information on these wonderful products. Adjust your pH. Thanks, Penny, for being here today. Thank God for your eyes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.